actually now nearly 800 PAs. Uh, and when I say park PAs, I mean protected areas, which means national parks, sanctuaries, of course, but it also includes conservation and community reserves. So you are looking at these four types of protected areas now. Um, and I'm going to just uh, pull out a few leaves from um, my memory tree that I have in my head. Um, I am very, very, you know, it's Western Ghats are after my heart. Uh, a lot of research work I've done in Southern Western Ghats, but since my childhood, I have ventured into Western Ghats, very close to Bombay. In fact, Bombay is also a part of Western Ghats in a way. And uh, so we go as, as young people from Bombay, we used to uh, go to places like Mathiran, Mahabaleshwar. These are tourist destinations, but they also have a lot of wildlife. And um, so I remember so many years when I would just, um, you know, just after the first rain, uh, trek up to Mathiran and spend two nights just tracking uh, snakes and other amphibians that emerge immediately after rain. And there have been nights where I have encountered uh, nearly 30 plus species of snakes just in uh, one night and belonging to nearly 10 or some 11 species, if I am not mistaken. So it's highly biodiverse. Um, the Western Ghats, the Northern Western Ghats, not so uh, talked about like the Southern Western Ghats is because uh, unlike the Southern Western Ghats, uh, the Northern Western Ghats doesn't, don't have too many uh, marshy grasslands um, called hudlus. In fact, has uh, laterite plateaus, uh, quite rocky they are. The slopes are also very not very gentle because of which it is not um, such a, a high density forest. It is equally biodiverse, but you don't see large conglomeration of mammals. And uh, you know, most people like to see elephants, tigers, leopards, and therefore they flock to the same locations all the time. Whereas if you, go, if you are in Mumbai or if you are in Pune, Nashik or any of these areas in the southern, uh, in the western side of Maharashtra, even in Gujarat, uh, you could easily travel to uh, Sayadri Tiger Reserve. Uh, you all must have, uh, obviously you know about a place called Kas Plateau. It uh, shot to limelight because of the uh, prolific uh, flowering that happens there. Uh, for the last uh, many years, uh, more than two and a half to three lakh people visit that place just over weekends. Um, so Sayadri Tiger Reserve starts just after Satara, that uh, Satara uh, town. And then you go up to class Kas Peto and then you go down on the other side. And uh, within an hour or so, you can be inside the Tiger Reserve. Um, the Tiger Reserve is extremely pretty. Um, this is... Uh, part of uh, the Sayadri Tiger Reserve, you can see um, the water body there, uh, the Koina Dam and Chandoli Dam. So Sayadri Tiger Reserve is actually like if you if you uh, know of the Dua Tiger Reserve, uh, similar to that Tiger Reserve, it is actually split into multiple parks. So Dudua is made out of three discontinuous parks, uh, Dudua, Kishanpur and Katarnya Ghat. Whereas Sayadri Tiger Reserve is um, split into two, Chandoli and uh, Koina. This particular photo is from Koina. Koina is again famous because of the water body. The water body is more than 60 kilometers in length. And there are many backwaters on all sides. And uh, there is wildlife, as you can see, all along the slopes. The slopes are pretty steep, but the green that you see is not grass. Those are massive evergreen and some of those are also semi evergreen trees. Um, it is extremely rich in uh, uh, plant life. It is extremely rich in obviously small uh, fauna. By small fauna, I mean um, frogs, reptiles, butterflies, several species of insects. And uh, just for people who like trekking, it's an amazing place. Uh, it, it has slightly gentler slopes on the east. On the western front, uh, as it goes down on the Konkan side, that is the steep side, Ratnagiri rather. So 
So on the Ratnagiri side, that is the, if you look at this tiger reserve on a map, um, you will see that the western uh, phase of this mountain is very steep. Whereas on the eastern phase, it goes down gradually. A lot of rivers emerge and regulates emerge from here. Um, uh, thankfully, many of them flow eastwards uh, and therefore that water is of great help for agriculture and so many other businesses. Um, the wildlife obviously uh, also interfaces with a lot of people. And you can see um, this is one of those uh, uh, boat rides that you do. And uh, this place is not very easy to go because uh, until recently there was no, not a single road inside the park. So there was a very small stretch of road. There are some roads here and there, but they are not connected to each other. So if somebody had to access the park, they'd have to go out and then enter the park from the other side. And even then, they will probably be able to only go in for about uh, uh, 10 kilometers or so. So only recently to protect the park from human interference, to also monitor wildlife uh, and to also set up anti-poaching camps as strategic locations, the forest department is slowly building a, a lifeline road for the forest guards because there are so many anti-poaching camps. Most of them are very close to the water body because the only means of travel in Sayadri currently is through boats. Uh, you can obviously trek, but uh, for guards to keep trekking just to the anti-poaching camp or the petroleum camp as they are called uh, will be extremely time consuming and, um, and also very, very difficult because of which they may not even feel like patrolling. And so to improve uh, connectivity, the park is the park management has is now constructing a road on the ridge line, which I hope will be done in a couple of years. It takes a lot of time because not never ever has a, a vehicle or a human being gone in that area. So you one needs to go up, clear the path, there are so many boulders, most of these are, uh, so they, they have to work on the rocks. So it's it's quite a task. I was there as part of the uh, state uh, monitoring committee. And uh, I actually went on one of those roads and I must, you know, it, I mean, it's an amazing feat by the forest department uh, to actually create that kind of access. Um, and definitely the way the path was being created, they were not widening it beyond what is required, which means for people who may be worried that these kind of roads can destroy the park, actually enough uh, care was taken to only use the contours without really creating um, future landslides there. So there was enough. Uh, and just to give you a bit of uh, 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 idea about the area, because there are two different parks, I'm not going to separate, the, I will, I'm going to add up the area, which means the core of this park, which means all the forests around the two. Uh, in Chandoli, you have two water bodies. In uh, Koina, you have one single huge water body. So around that water body, you generally have the core uh, and the, the consolidated core of Sayadri is about 600 uh, square kilometers. The buffer zone is another 565 square kilometers. Together, it is about 1,165 uh, square kilometers of beautiful forest. Uh, these are at different times. This one uh, was in uh, Feb 2021. So this is about three, four months ago. Uh, and this one is again in a different season and you can imagine, and you can see the change in the reflections on the water and also the current on the water. You can see that this water is far more choppy. So uh, and it's just spectacular on any side, you go and point your camera, you can take a great picture. This is after sundown. Uh, these are the forest department boats. Uh, tourists can go to some of the trekking points which are along the many um, forts. So there are some very, very famous forts inside uh, both Chandoli and uh, Koina. And uh, there are a lot of tourists who come, but they don't enter the park from the main entry point. They access the forts from the villages near the fort, which is along the periphery. So Prachitgarh is one of those forts, but there are several uh, forts. People in Maharashtra uh, regularly go there. Uh, many of them don't even know that it is uh, that their fort is actually on the border of the core of the tiger reserve. Um, this is a moon you see. There are several. There were several villages in both Chandoli and uh, Koina, 
and uh, maharashtra government need to be congratulated for carrying out a very uh, successful voluntary relocation program uh, so several villages who are uh, actually i mean i have interacted with several villagers in uh, these tiger reserves and uh, i mean you your heart goes out for them because initially they were all in the valley uh, and uh, when the dams were constructed many of those villagers without even their consent they only got an order from the government that they need to be moved out uh, and some of these irrigation department relocation programs have not been very very successful a lot of people have just been moved out uh, but contrary to popular belief uh, the second wave of voluntary relocation remember it's voluntary relocation uh, was carried out by the forest department and it was done with proper consent an agreement with the villagers and the villagers were shown multiple locations they could choose which one they wanted to go to uh, and those locations were generally closer to highways railways or something where you know so that it started so they got access to good quality health but otherwise you can imagine this kind of a place where because of the water body you can't enter from here the water body is at some places uh, more than 1 and 1/2 kilometers wide um, it's almost and there are villages along the banks of this water body uh, it is very very difficult for anybody under in emergency and you can imagine the kind of uh, rains it probably receives the highest amount of rain in the western northern western ghats uh, and during that time if there is a ailing old person or a pregnant woman it is nearly impossible for them to access um, medical help um, so these are some of these um, uh, deity uh, sculptures that the villagers have left behind some of them do return to these places uh, once or twice in a year to just pay homage to uh, and, and people um, on the surface they look quite happy there are some more villages who have uh, have wanted to go out and the forest department is trying to um, you know uh, relocate them uh, but because of covid the fundings have gone down and because of which uh, the relocation program has slowed down but when it comes to the forest you know it's every single patch of the forest is photographable like many places in maharashtra the big life forms you normally people flock to see but the small life if you are interested in insects uh, birds reptiles amphibians plants um, you will never want to come out of uh, koina you would just want to go and uh, set up a tent and keep observing this is a cicada molt the animal has actually climbed up from the soil uh, hooked on to the bark and then the the back of the mold splits and the winged insect emerges dries the wing and flies away so this is an empty mold of a cicada uh, as i said flora wise it's amazing um, more than 800 species uh, nearly 1000 species of flowering plants uh, this is the most common evergreen uh, tree that you see this is called anjan Mamacillon umbellatum is a scientific name, but extremely pretty because the flower uh, it flowers in a very unusual way. Uh, you will have bunch of flowers from the bark itself, from different branches. So uh, you don't see leaves, just the flower. And uh, in Feb, March, April they flower, and when that happens, the entire forest uh, looks beautiful. Uh, there are so many species of orchids. Um, this is Dendrobium. uh this dendrobium orchids are largely epiphytes they grow on uh, other uh, moss covered barks of trees some of them are also on the ground um this one uh, grows in the dry season but there are several like the foxtail orchid so many different hibernarias they grow during monsoon monsoon is a great time for orchids but even in uh, feb march you can see uh, such flowers all, all across the forest um because of the density of tree because it's an evergreen forest because uh, there are hardly any roads you don't see large mammals but there are large mammals and as i walked i saw many many scrapes and scats of um, leopards leopards uh, because tiger density is a very low um, uh, because it's a small forest there is uh, hardly any spotted deer population most of it is sambar and gaur and that to only in some patches because the other steep slopes um are not preferred by these animals 
they do use them but not uh, as perfect permanent residents so tigers also keep coming in but there is no resident tiger as of now but there are always reports of tiger pug marks or sighting by local villagers and shepherds who venture along uh, i mean close to the park or in the buffer zones um, and all throughout the year so there are indirect evidences this is a leopard scrape a leopard while marking its territory it will move the leaves and either urinate or defecate there this is a wild dog uh, scat again you can see the leaf litter um, pression guards the most of the nutrients are in the first 6 inches of the soil because it's all the humus the what the leaves that fall off uh, actually create lot of nutrients um, the soil is shallow but the top layer of the soil has all the nutrients this is a wild dog scat in fact when we covered that new road that has come up um, from chandoli we drove all the way and there is a small sliver of a corridor between chandoli and koina um, so along that road in chandoli we saw i would have stopped the vehicle at least 20 times to look at the wild dog uh, scats it was completely strewn by um, the scats and there are so many other indirect evidences of animals on the left uh, top corner uh, so i'm moving the cursor there this is a sprint sprint meaning excreta of otters so in some of the first and second order streams we saw i saw um, otter sprints the department doesn't know what species it is they have put a camera trap and they have got an otter um, mostly i i think it the smooth coated otters people have seen but i think this is the small clawed otter but we need to confirm that and so uh, some more camera trapping is being done currently on the right hand side there is this are uh, sloth bear scats you can see a lot of mud and uh, ant remains so sloth bears largely feed on ants um and termites and so the scat generally has lot of because when they are uh, digging in and sucking ants a lot of dust also goes along with it so their excreta uh, is you know by weight largely soil with exoskeleton of insects on this side you have a scat of a, a, a omnivore but currently that animal has eaten uh, seeds of uh, laburnum tree which is castia fistula and uh, it is uh, uh, the palm civet and on the right hand side bottom is the uh, dropping of the porcupine so when you walk through forest like uh, the northern machine guards you need to keep your eyes on the floor uh, thankfully you don't have large mammals like elephants to watch out for and so you can focus on the floor you have to be careful because there are sloth bears and we saw a lot of telltale signs of sloth bear um there are snakes um uh, so sloth bears um and so you have to be careful but uh, you know the the ground is like an encyclopedia and, and and these animals have written on it all over um russell swiper several species of snakes i saw uh, at least five species this one um, i love russell swiper for the attitude they show it's the loudest hiss of any living snake on earth india has Three and a half, three point three hundred and five species of known species of snakes. There might be more. Uh, Russell's viper is one of the most, um, um, you know, famous or rather infamous snakes. This is the track of a sloth bear. This is the hind limb, and this is the front fore limb. Uh, the fore limb has, if you can see this particular ridge, and that's it is used to hold trees because they climb. Uh, so many of these roads were. loaded with um, uh, sloth bear uh, scats and other telltale signs um, these are the forest guards um, who regularly patrol these new roads you can just uh, understand from the height of the trees uh, how towering western guard forests are um, it's an ethereal place and people should definitely go and visit you can access the park via karad or via satara uh, you stay there are forest guest houses uh, currently uh, there are some boat rides to a restricted area but there are so many treks that you can go on permissions you can take from the forest department and walk again many streams that uh, one comes across crystal clear water uh, many fish tadpoles even in february we saw frogs 
uh, in this area. And these are the anti poaching. So, this is uh, my our boat was moving, and, and you can see that the guard has actually come to, you know, uh, just for a sh short discussion with the DFO who was traveling with me. Uh, so, these are the places where these guys live. Uh, huge monsoon showers they get, and it's a very difficult life because every step they take, they either climb or they come down. And it's a very tough place. And I must say that um, they are doing some great jobs. Wherever in Western Guards you have any state, if the forest is surviving and thriving, then the credit must go to the forest guards, the foot soldiers who are actually protecting, protecting the, these parks. Um, again, uh, this is another place where the Maharashtra Forest Department boat was docked. Um, this was, uh, we were actually visiting the anti-poaching camps to look at the facilities. Um, it's just an ethereal place, really. Um, evenings, I mean, anywhere you see sun setting, sunrise on one side, sets on the other. Very, very pretty. So now I'm moving to Similipal. People write it, uh, actually, if you, it is pronounced as Similipal, uh, Odisha. So there should be an I after an M if you are looking at, but if you look at any of the other online platforms, they normally call it Similipal. And this is again one of the first tiger reserves of India. They, uh, this uh, was declared in 1973 alongside Ranthambor, Bandipur, Melghat. So nine tiger reserves. This is one of those nine tiger reserves. So Project Tiger was launched here in Similipal. And Similipal is in Odisha. Um, I'll tell you, uh, I mean, a little bit about how to go there and all whenever, uh, I mean, uh, but it's all available online. But anyways, if you are at, in Bhuvaneshwar, uh, you, it will take you about four and a half hours of drive from Katak, remove half an hour because it's towards Katak, Katak and Bhuvaneshwar are twin cities in Odisha. So uh, in from Katak, you will get there in four hours. But uh, this is particularly in the Banjpur district. Uh, and the closest railhead, I think, is Baripada. Uh, but from Baripada also, you will take uh, some, I mean, uh, because while it is, as a crow flies, very close to the tiger reserve, but the entry point of Similipal is uh, down south. So from Baripada, you will have to go down. It's about, I think, 80 kilometers from there. So um, I think 76 kilometers or so from, uh, from uh, the, uh, there is a railhead called Balasore. So you can go by train to Balasar or you can fly to Bhuvaneshwar and then drive. Simlipal is one of the largest tiger reserves of India. Um, 2,750 2, square kilometers. Um, there are several uh, important tourist locations there, beautiful waterfalls, but uh, for people who love forests, just want to see the, the profusion of undergrowth, and the multiple stories, Simlipal is the place to be. Um, uh, this is on one of the game drives within the park. You can imagine how it is. What is quite amazing for a naturalist, when I went there, uh, this I saw uh, in Simlipal a lot of features of Western Ghats. So many species that are common with Western Ghats. They're far away from Western Ghats. It also has, a, obviously, Eastern Ghats is much closer. So Western Ghat and Eastern Ghat, plus there are some species from the, uh, the northern style. So not Himalaya, but sub-Himalayan region. So uh, it's an amazing landscape. I would say one of the most unique forests uh, of India. It is also one of, it is the only place where you have the black morph of the tiger, which is basically melanistic form, where it's not completely black, but the black stripes are very, very wide and with very thin uh, uh, yellow stripes in between. So this is the only place where you have that gene. Simlipal was in news because of um, the fires that 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 raged there this um, dry season. It was uh, appalling. Nearly three ranges of the park uh, was burned down. And one can imagine uh, because the forest is so extensive uh, that uh, and undulating that it becomes very difficult for the forest department to uh, control fire. Uh, again, Simlipal, if you look at Simlipal, the design of the park, if you can see my hand, it is like a boomerang, not such a thin boomerang, but thick boomerang. So there is in the center 
of the path there are villages so from the i would say from the western side there is a uh, there is a big chunk of uh, human habitation uh, running right through the park uh, and so the north side of sembipal and the southern side of sembipal are actually disjointed because there is huge amount of human habitation the government is trying to relocate people obviously covid has slowed down everything people are willingly wanting to go out but it's a uh, uh, it's a pretty place and there are brooks everywhere streams uh, rivulets you go any time of the year there is water even in summer uh, a lot of these streams are flowing and simply pal because i said it has it's a quite a biodiverse place um, and the what, what we call the simply pal biosphere reserve if you look at the number of bird species there it is 360 birds so 360 birds 1070 odd uh, flowering plants i'm not even uh, including in those the algae and all other species so there are so many non flowering plants as well so it's highly biodiverse from the botany point of view um, there are nearly 170 species of butterflies uh, nearly 80 species of uh, frogs and reptiles i think about 60 plus species of reptiles alone um, obviously in terms of large mammals you have several species pretty much everything that you find in central india is in simlipal but you can add elephants to it so there are elephants there Uh, you will have sambar munjak um, mouse deer barking deer tiger leopards um hyenas pretty much everything that you see in kanha or uh, some such forest plus the elephants uh, but i think uh, when you enter a place like taroba taroba is a pretty place but it doesn't give you that feeling of vastness but when you enter simlipal it is larger than life so people who have been to dudwa people who have been to kobet can identify with it because if you've been to kobet you when you enter kobet and you can feel that you have entered something which is really larger than life simply pal gives you that feeling obviously i told you about vegetation um, wherever there is dry wood you will have a plethora of mon- uh, uh, fungus uh, that is uh, mushrooms uh, i have not i mean if one had to actually go and um, Uh, look at the small species i am sure not much work has been done this is a two tail spider hercilid uh, and it there are so many species i am sure of spiders and scorpions that have not been discovered there because not much of research has gone in um, this is a very macro close up of uh, eggs of a moth um, there are so many such fascinating things when i went there i just kind of, i didn't know i was a kid in the candy store um you don't see the typical large mammal densities that you see in other parts because uh, until now there is huge amount of this, uh, dependence on that forest so villagers do go in there is you uh, dependence on minor forest produce and so the densities obviously are not very high but uh, there are indirect evidences of uh, everything around so th- so i pretty much got indirect and direct evidence of several uh, mammals bo- both big and small um birds uh, this is again as i told you uh, it also has the giant squirrel like you i mean so many places in uh, western ghats pretty much everywhere you have this you have a small population of giant squirrel even in satpura tiger reserve and then you have in simlipal and these are different races though there are seven different races of giant squirrels in india the munjak direct sighting elephants are nocturnal there because again of disturbance they do come to salt licks to Uh, have their salt in the day you will only see elephant tracks or the trees that they have broken or areas or their uh, droppings um and definitely there are tigers as you saw i saw these kind of boards there they are very old uh, but this reads you are in the territory of tiger number c8 uh other tigers male 0 female 3 cub 0 so uh, i don't know the exact times but i think this must have been put up uh, at least 6 uh, to about 10 years back um so they they were monitoring tigers uh, they do are monitoring tigers but currently because of the fire there has been damage and covid also uh, so we don't know the exact number but uh, from uh, my walk there definitely the tiger density is uh, not as good as many other parks it is definitely not as good as it can be so uh, once the dependence of people 
comes down the forest will be able to hold many more tigers than you have currently uh, this is a indirect evidence of a tiger track um, there is a sambar track next to it uh, then you have a indirect evidence of leopard this is a leopard track so there are animals just that they are very very shy this is uh, the the bare pani uh, water hall waterfall which is extremely which is very famous and a lot of people flock uh, here the access is there people and a lot of uh, local villagers take them on walks the forest is just magnificent you can keep seeing um, now we from there let us move from um, central india let's go to um, north again one of my favorite uh, states kashmir also ladakh now although they have been split for me it's just one uh, this is the overa aru wildlife sanctuary it is one of the most uh, important wildlife sanctuaries and extreme and large wildlife sanctuaries of kashmir uh, very pretty extremely good in terms of himalayan um, flora and very good in terms of bird life uh, obviously when you go up in such extreme climates you will not have the kind of bird diversity that you see in uh, western ghats but uh, this place supports about 120 species of birds kokolas pheasant uh, even the monal pheasant uh, is uh, is found there there are several several species of woodpeckers uh, laughing thrushes it's a beautiful place uh, this again uh, pretty much you can go all throughout the year uh, winter also obviously you won't see too much wildlife but the place looks very pretty monsoon is when uh, you should avoid going there this is about i would say 8 kilometers from pelgam so not very far from pelgam if people know where pelgam is but even if you were in srinagar it will take you just two and a half hours to drive to overaru and i recommend people who go to kashmir and whenever they are on a picnic or a family trip they should always keep aside a couple of days to walk through this beautiful beautiful sanctuary um i mean you know i i miss a heartbeat when i and when i look at these pictures um and right now you are just seeing a beautiful forest but you are not feeling the breeze on your body you're not hearing the gurgling sound of a brook or you are not see hearing the orchestra of the birds that i was experiencing when i took this photo so this is not even 10% of how it is because it's like covid people who have got covid will know when you lose smell and taste uh, food just becomes uh, you know like you are eating some i mean it's like you are feeding on raw vegetables or grass or whatever it is so photos are like that i mean you love the photos but uh, this is not even a patch on what real life experiences when you go there this is a scaly bellied woodpecker uh, female i it had come down on the ground it was feeding on um, uh, termites that were there um, gray bush chat beautiful bird i spent about one and a half hours observing a pair that were i think taking nest material um, very very pretty uh, the forest in the mist in the morning every day morning is like this um plumbius uh, water red start you go to any north indian as in himachal pradesh uttarakhand or kashmir stream this bird is um, will always be there uh, it's an amazing uh, flyer and swimmer uh, feeds on insects grubs this is uh, another species of it's called the himalayan woodpecker um not uh, it's a very common species there um very easily sighted um laughing thrush is this is streak throated laughing thrush um very common blue uh, rock thrush used to be called the himalayan rock thrush and this very interesting uh, member of the crow family it is found only in kashmir and nowhere else and this is called the eurasian jackdaw um uh, amazing eyes if crows you think have attitude you can imagine how this uh, bird is very very um, strong flyer as you can see if they have to survive up in the mountains they have to be good crows are amazing flyers you must have seen crows actually playing in gusty winds by just you know they can freeze at one location um and when you as a human being 
gets pushed by the wind the crow will actually be at that one spot you know i've i've seen that with fish underwater uh, when the currents are strong and you as a diver you are struggling to hold on uh, you know you can't swim against them anyways but fish just stand there as if um, there was vacuum um, so this eurasian job jackdaw is after my heart too i really enjoy watching them they are very hardy animals like in everywhere uh, if you are a naturalist uh you can see on the left hand side some leaves those are wild strawberries um so many different flowers i am not a good botanist so i don't know the name of many himalayan species but uh, nevertheless they look very pretty and so my camera doesn't mind capturing them streams flowing around just sitting next to the stream all through the day uh the most lousy writer can also become a poet, poet uh, if they spend some time in such beautiful locations uh, so this is uh, overa aru wildlife sanctuary uh, about 8 kilometers from pelgam definitely something that you must visit uh, and then i'm going to talk about silent valley uh, this is the second last uh, place that i'm going to talk today out of the five um not a very large sized park so Silent Valley has a very very uh, impo- I mean uh, strong history. So Silent Valley, uh, if people, I don't know whether they know that this place would have got ruined in 1973 itself because the Kerala State Electricity Board wanted to build a dam on the river. the dam they said is only going to submerge about 8.3 square kilometers i mean there are huge dams for instance just the pench reservoir is about 73 74 square kilometers periyar reservoir is about 229 square kilometers so compared to those um this was a much smaller hydroelectric project it was to be called the silent valley hydroelectric project um but um thankfully there were people who knew the value of this park this park by the way is is a very small sized park compared to many other parks it's about 89 or 90 square kilometers right but it is one of the most biodiverse parks um in the nilgiri biosphere reserve so people who know nilgiri biosphere reserve uh will be able to identify you are looking at pushpagiri brahmagiri you are looking at bandipur nagarole you are looking at wynad you are looking at mudumalai from mudumalai down south when you move to uh, south west you enter what is called mukurti and then there is nilambur forest division mukurti is in the border of kerala and tamil nadu it is um, in tamil nadu and then from mukurti you go uh, again southwest you enter silent valley and uh, along with bandipur nagarole mukurti mudumalai the park that is silent valley national park is the core of the nilgiri biosphere reserve it is one of the most biodiverse uh, habitats i have gone on transex to look at plants here um, i have been here several times but um, on one occasion when we were doing transex if when we walk you would walk 200 meters so 200 meters of walk and in several patches you will never see a repeat species of plant so every single tree or plant i mean shrubs obviously there will be repeats but i'm talking about trees every single species in a 200 meter walk is a new species there new species meaning a different one so highly highly biodiverse in just a 90 square kilometer park see uh, simli similipal tiger reserve i said has nearly 1170 uh, species of plants flowering plants whereas silent valley is just 90 square kilometers and it has 1000 species of flowering plants think 108 species of orchids 108 i am saying because that figure is stuck in my head but the the numbers would have changed because new species are discovered every year um there are nearly 200 species of liverworts liverworts are plants that grow along mossy outcrops on rocks 
so near the waterfalls wherever there are waterfalls you will see some small uh, green moss like things a lot of those are liverworts there are just 200 species of them 75 species of known lichen and nearly 200 species of algae this is all in addition to the uh, angiosperms that i was talking about so liverworts have are interesting because they feed on insects so they are insectivorous plants so they have a globular structure insects enter there they get trapped there and they take nutrients out of there very very tiny so they feed on very tiny insects some of them are smaller than 1 mm i am mean, talking about the insect prey so extremely good it is a uh, uh, altitude wise it uh, varies from say 600 meters it goes all the way to 2300 meters so just in 90 square kilometer park you are covering a huge variety of all uh, habitats because the altitude keeps changing and that is the reason why it is biodiverse uh, so for instance people who have been to uh, eagles nest eagles nest is also some a place where you climb rapidly so with every uh, say 200 meters the type of vegetation will change and uh, so you have more than 700 species of birds in eagles nest in where in uh, in silent valley in the western ghats again the altitude varies but on an average the entire park is uh, so if you take an average it's about 880 to 1200 meters is where most of the park is the peak of course is uh, 2328 meters so it's a uh, amazingly beautiful park um this is the place where uh, this is one foot over bridge i mean the the hanging bridge that one has to cross uh, this is very close to the entry point um inside the park so this would have got completely submerged this was a valley that would have been submerged thanks to uh, some naturalist people there was a uh um um mycologist who subramaniam i think dr subramaniam who along with romulus viteka people know about him these people uh, really supported the cause and influenced indira gandhi who then turned down uh, the proposal so uh people should know that lot of people and romulus very much is around and so a lot of big roles uh these unsung heroes have played to protect these parks and you can imagine i'm not going to talk much just keep look at the density of trees i was just flabbergasted and for somebody like me who spent so much time in the forest to be in awe all the time continuously while i was walking it is amazing you this is like borneo okay look at the light cutting through the mountain tops hitting and every minute the the park the beauty of the park changes as the sun goes up uh, see how 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 it looks you know it's, this is early morning uh, this is a tamil yoman butterfly there are several species of butterflies i'm 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 not going to great detail but you know in excess of 150 species of butterflies again uh, i love observing telltale signs this is the excreta of a civet it is fed on seeds you can see how important mammals and birds are when it comes to dispersal of seeds in a evergreen forest there are indirect evidences of tigers this is a, a scrape on the left hand side of a tiger and you, you can see that the tiger is actually defecated here so the tiger actually moved uh, towards this direction which means from top to bottom obviously this is taken right from on a top angle so the 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 dropping is normally in the direction from where the tiger is coming so and on the right hand side you have a telltale sign of the ant the sambar deer rubbing antler uh, the velvet of the antler has to be removed because it starts itching once the antler is of a certain size uh the skin comes off and a lot of insects start bothering the animal and that's when they rub those uh and velvets off uh, so these are indirect evidences and see this is how the light will hit and uh, if you remember the ad for my talk we in fact uh, this is the photo and then i zoomed into just the lower part so you can see that the sunlight has hit just the top of these trees and this is the photo of those trees uh Uh, so this is how the forest is and these trees you i will show you the size of these trees so just by looking at them they look like grass actually from the top but actually each one of them is a giant uh, so this is a photo from top of a mountain 
looking into the valley in the morning and as you can see so many different colors these these are all different species that you see size of the leaf in uh, the den the density of leaves color of the leaves all of it is looking so different and heterogeneous uh, so this is that patch and this photo was when we walked into that patch and you can see just the buttress which is a supporting part of the tree is at least three times as large as a human being um, another giant you know it's a blessing to uh, you know walk through western ghats you know trees um, just are mesmerizing and of course it's a very well known for several species of um, uh, mammals elephants tigers leopards black panthers that is melanistic leopards are found there obviously several species of deer mouse deer and all those but lion tail macaque it is probably has the best uh, population of lion tail macaques there are about 3500 to 4000 lion tail macaques in the wild uh, of this silent valley holds a very very healthy population of this charismatic um, primate uh, one of those black and white images of the, the on the trail that i was on you could uh, there is no place to stay right on the top there was a dormitory and i'm sure uh, you can stay there but that gets filled up very fast so you can access uh, this from uh, there is a is a place called mukalli so there is uh, so in palagat so the closest town is uh, palagat you can stay there uh, there are several hotels which are about 10 kilometers to 15 to 20 kilometers away and you can uh, every morning uh, take a jeep and drive up so you have to go up the mountain and then enter the park there are some walks possible um, there is no safari drive as such but as of now because of covid all that is shut but uh, you could stay in one of those villages outside and every day morning go up and spend the entire day um, walking inside the park and this is the final um this is again part of the western ghats it is called the fansad wildlife sanctuary uh it is not very far from bombay in fact it is just 140 kilometers from bombay but you could access this via the jetty so from uh, church gate if you board near from near the taj hotel uh, gateway of india you can go to alibagh so alibagh is not far it's about 40 kilometers from fansad sanctuary and uh, in fact even closer is the murud janjira beach the murud beach is about 22 25 minutes from the entry point of fansad wildlife sanctuary this sanctuary is again a small sanctuary about 85 uh, square kilometer or so uh, but it is again loaded with lot of life uh, uh, you could walk there are four or five good trails the forest department the watcher uh, will come with you Uh, you could stay in these places uh, that those are about 10 7 8 15 15 kilometers from the sanctuary you can there is a forest guest house inside as well and you could book that and you can if you are staying and if you are interested in observing nocturnal species especially frog mouths it's well known for frog mouth the bird uh, or uh, the yellow thigh spider it's the big um, um, uh, cat paw spiders uh, the yellow thigh spiders are seen uh in fansad quite commonly people interested in scorpions spiders moths they regularly go to fansad because it's close to bombay a lot of people from bombay keep visiting this place uh, the park again as i said is small um uh, but there is 10 square, square kilometers of eco sensitive zone around it so 70 square kilometers of fansad and then you have 10 square kilometers in that 10 square, square kilometers of eco sensitive zone there are 43 villages so it's surrounded by people but uh, for photographers who are interested in macro uh, rather than you know traveling miles uh, to some tiger reserve they could easily go and walk into these parks and you know take photos of insects butterflies including butterflies and several other spiders you can see on this uh, nymph it's a young one of a grasshopper short horn grasshopper there is a red colored mite there so there is a parasite on this grasshopper um skinks bronze skinks um this is another uh, spider there are trapdoor spiders there are cat paw spiders there are tarantulas um amazing place to see spiders this is another uh 
gastrocantha spider which has horn plates on the edge this is a female the male is much smaller uh, all across the park you can see wonderful species of um, you know um, reptiles and amphibians this is a shield tail you can look at the glistening color this is a endemic species shield tails are endemic uh, some of these species are endemic to the western ghats not found anywhere else in india shield tails as a family are found in sri lanka also but all those there are several um, are unique to some of those are unique to just one valley uh, beautiful uh, they feed on earthworms and other smaller invertebrates obviously and the most uh, notorious uh, the saw scale viper is not very rare this is a very small uh, individual it was a baby and i was sitting it and it was not even a 6 uh, inches away from me when i noticed it it's really small it's taken on a macro thing otherwise it was uh, barely as long as my palm and then mushrooms again beautiful all across uh, monsoon is the best time to go there uh, nights are so loud because of frog calls that you can't talk to each other and summers are loud equally loud because of sikaras so an amazing place um, so this is the end of my talk this photo is not from hansard it is from uh, the great indian bustard sanctuary uh, near sholapur in maharashtra um, and this is the female black buck that you see so you protect an area for one species automatically it protects so many so like tiger is a symbol for protecting the woodlands i think bustards uh, floricans black bucks wolves these are the species um, because of which so many other species of plant and animal are protected um, these are my coordinates you could write to me or look at my photos that i put up with some scientific facts on instagram um thank you so much